हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल लेट एस कंटिन्यू अवर लेसन नंबर फिफ्टीन एंड दिस इज़ द थर्ड वीडियो ऑफ लेसन नंबर फिफ्टीन इन विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग करंटली द बी ओ पी क्राइसिस राइट सो लेट एस कंटिन्यू अबाउट द इकोनॉमिक रिफॉर्म्स आफ्टर द बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट क्राइसिस नाइनटीन नाइन्टी वन वॉट ऑल हैपन वी स्टार्टेड दिस इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो एंड वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू इट हियर सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंट कमिटीज दैट वर ऑल्सो सेटअप आफ्टर नाइनटीन नाइन्टी Uh, which will recommend to the government various uh, you know reforms in different sectors so just like we saw about the tax reforms okay different committees were there about the tax reforms uh, you know there were several other committees re related to other aspects also so one of the important aspects uh, you know that was necessary to reform in our country was the banking sector okay banking sector and financial sector so as we know that banking sector is very very important for industrial development in a country because bank is a means of you know institutional credit okay banks provide institutional credit to businesses right so they play a very important role in an economy especially in development of industry and you know different kinds of sectors similarly financial sector development is also very important because it provides you know companies to list their shares on stock markets and you know also enables the customers to buy shares and you know different kind of financial instruments so development of banking sector and financial sector is very very crucial for development of economy so in order to recommend the uh, in order to suggest what changes we need to do what reforms we need to bring in you know banking and financial sector so uh, mr Nar narsimhan was given the responsibility to head this committee okay so that committee uh, was known as narsimhan committee so basically narsimhan committee uh, so mr narsimhan was given the you know charge of recommending uh, you know reforms in financial sector and banking sector so the first committee the first narsimhan committee the first time that this committee was set up was in 1991 august 1991 immediately after the crisis and the second narsimhan committee was in 1998 okay after 7 years so some of the recommendations of first committee were accepted by the government but you know still there were some issues with the banking and financial sector so again in 1998 another government came and at that time it was a vajpayee government so during that time uh, again you know second time mr narsimhan was asked to uh you know recommend changes in the banking sector so two narsimhan committees are there and it is very important to understand the role of narsimhan committee in indian economic reforms the first narsimhan committee of 1991 was basically the committee on financial sector reforms okay so they were given a task of uh, you know recommending the financial sector so financial sector also includes banking sector okay we already know that you know financial markets banking you know it already uh, contains everything okay banking is also a part of financial sector and uh, the second committee was known as reform uh, you know the committee on banking sector reforms okay of 1998 so this is just the name uh, that i wanted to mention now in this video let us study about the narsimhan first committee of 1991 what exactly happened so it was tasked with the work of to study all the aspects relating to structure organization functions and procedures of the financial system okay so these were the uh, you know terms of reference that was given to this committee to work to recommend improvements in their efficiency and productivity okay how we can improve the efficiency and productivity of the financial sector okay so that you know in more efficiently the funds can be mobilized and it can be given to industries so that people can have better saving instruments okay so in order to improve the efficiency and productivity of the financial sectors now what was the background we already know the background the background was the balance of payment crisis plus the you know uh, low rate of growth low rate of uh, rate of gdp growth in our country so this was the background and india badly needed growth of industrial sector after 1991 crisis okay for any country to develop we need development of industrial sector so we badly needed at that time because at that time our gdp was you know very in a very bad shape balance of payment crisis was there we wanted to increase our exports our manufacturing we wanted to increase so uh, you know we needed that development of industrial sector and for this banking sector and financial sector is extremely important so this was the background now what were the recommendations of the narsimhan first committee so the first one was it it recommended to reduce the slr slr and crr we know it is a statutory liquidity ratio and 
um, cash reserve ratio. So it it asks to reduce the SLR from 38.5% to 25%. See, SLR was 38.5% at that time. And CRR was 15% and it was asked to be reduced to 3 to 5%. So see, you can imagine if this was the rate of, uh, you know, reserves that the RBI was asking, uh, you know, commercial banks to keep. So 38.5 plus 15 is almost 53-54% of the money that the banks are receiving. They have to keep it as reserves so what will the banking industry you know lend how they will do their business so that is the reason why they were not able to do proper business so it recommended that you reduce these rates this reserve requirements from 38.5 to 25 and from 15 to 3 to 5 percent so this was the major uh, you know recommendation that it had suggested uh, in the comment section can you please comment what is the current slr and crr so uh, you know I, I just want to see how much you're updated with the current affairs so if you can rec uh, if you can comment in the comment section please do it now uh, phasing out then the second recommendation was phasing out direct credit programs in which the banks were compelled to set aside funds for poor sections at decreased rate so okay so this was a kind of priority sector lending so it recommended that uh, you know uh, but it was at that time it was known as direct credit programs okay so it asked that we should phase this out okay in a phased manner and uh, reduce them taper them down slowly and then you just phase them out because it is not serving the banking industry then the next one was uh, about the deregulation of interest rates okay see before 1991 crisis interest rates were regulated okay interest rates were regulated regulated meaning the government used to say what will be the interest rate okay what will be the interest rate at that at which the banks can lend for example the government will say that you know you can lend at 15 percent so banks had to lend at 15 percent if the government will say you have to lend at 10 percent the banks could lend at 10 percent so there was a regulation on interest rate okay so banks could not decide their interest rate based on the demand and supply of money in the economy so uh, then it recommended that we should deregulate interest rate okay we should deregulate de administer the interest rates okay so market determine interest rates it recommended and one important thing was that that if we want to suggest something government meaning see here rbi okay when i am saying that government used to suggest meaning rbi used to suggest now uh, so one important thing was that there should be some control of rbi on the you know interest rates so it recommended that we should have a benchmark prime prime lending rate okay plr b p l r now what is b p l r i'll tell you See, prime lending rate in simple terms is a rate at which commercial banks will lend to its prime customers, okay? Prime customers meaning it's very trustworthy and credit worthy customers, okay? Credit worthy customers, meaning customers who, are, who have good credit history, who are very good customers, who are big customers. So obviously, if you know they are good customers, if they are credit worthy customers, the banks will lend to them at a lower interest rate because the risk is low, right? If risk is low, then the banks will charge them low interest rate. So that interest rate is known as prime lending rate at which the banks, the commercial banks will lend to its prime customers. Now this prime lending rate is for one individual bank, okay? So SBI will have its prime lending rate different HDFC will have a different PLR, okay, ICICI will have a different PLR, it depends on their customer base and you know their own calculations because every bank has a different cost of borrowing funds also, right? So they have different FD rates, they have different savings rate, they have, you know, maybe they are getting money from the RBI at a repo rate, we don't know. So they have different borrowing rates, so you know they will also lend at different rates. So different banks will have different prime lending rates, but RBI said that we will recommend a benchmark prime lending rate, okay? So your prime lending rate should be minimum this much, okay? It cannot, it, you, so if the RBI's benchmark prime lending rate is 8%, so no bank can lend below 8%, okay? So you, your interest rate of lending cannot be below 8%. So that is the meaning of prime lending rate. Sorry, benchmark prime lending rate. Okay, now what is the purpose of benchmark prime lending rate? See, if the prime lending, if the BPLR is not defined by the RBI, then what will happen? The banks will start lending at a very, very low interest rate and, you know, in, or, in order to increase its customer base and, you know, there may be a kind of uh, economic crisis also because of that. And uh, this kind of crisis was responsible for the global financial crisis of 2007-8, right? 
because it was a it and it is also known as sub prime crisis sub prime crisis because the banks were lending to the sub prime customers okay the customers who were not credit worthy so this kind of crisis can occur therefore the rbi recommended the bplr okay rbi always recommends the bplr meaning at that time so that was a recommendation of the narsimhan committee that we should have a bplr and in 2000 and it was accepted but then in 2010 this bplr was changed to base rate okay so rbi then used to define base rate instead of uh bplr and now currently we have the repo and reverse repo rate so that is our policy rate so now you can see that the rbi's policy rate okay policy rate of rbi initially it was you know uh you know it was administered interest rate regulated interest rate then you know bplr came into being then after that base rate and now it is a repo rate so these are the base rate is still given by the rbi but it is linked to repo rate this we already know so repo rate is a policy rate now so this is just the history this happened in 1991 then the next recommendation was uh, you know establishment of arf tribunal okay arf is basically asset reconstruction fund okay so npas of public sector banks were very high npas meaning non performing assets so these are basically the the loans you know loans which are in danger situation so maybe the banks will not be able to get this loans bank uh, loans back because people are defaulting on payments so such loans are known as npas and of public sector banks they were very high okay because of several political reasons so previously what used to happen this public sector banks were 100% government owned so some minister will call the chairman of the bank and say that this is my person this is the businessman he is my friend you lend him at this this rate okay and you should give him loan even if his credit worthiness is not uh, you know established so these thing these kind of things used to happen and that is the reason why there was lot of nps but then what happened you know uh, obviously uh, you know in order to uh, you know reduce the nps we need to have some recovery kind of thing we should be able to recover our loans so it recommended you know establishment of a debt recovery tribunal okay so there should be a debt recovery tribunal in case there is any dispute between the creditor and the creditee okay the person who has taken loan and the banks okay and asset reconstruction fund was recommended okay that you know government from its budget should give some fund for the public sector banks so uh, you know in order to deal with the stressed assets in order to deal with the uh, uh, you know npas of the uh, banks this we are going to study in detail uh, actually this recommendation was further you know uh, uh, kind of uh, corroborated in the second narsimhan committee again and then finally in 2002 it was accepted okay uh, later on uh, it it came into being uh, after the second narsimhan committee so basically to it was to take over proportion of bad and doubtful debts from banks and financial institutions okay i'll explain it to you in the later video how exactly the asset reconstruction companies and asset reconstruction fund happens okay so basically this was the seeds of the surface act 2002 okay again we are going to study this uh, and creation of arcs we are going to study this in the next video then the next recommendation was removal of dual control okay see rbi was also the owner of this of the public sector banks and it was also uh, sorry uh, uh, so dual control meaning here rbi and banking division of ministry of finance they regulated banks and uh you know they said that because of this dual control there is a lot of confusion about the jurisdiction okay who will regulate them so whenever there is a, such jurisdictional confusion you know people will make use of this loopholes and you know they will uh, play around with it so then it recommended that we should not have dual control ministry of finance should not regulate these banks only rbi should regulate okay so now only rbi regulates the bank we know that under the banking regulation act then more freedom to bank should be given autonomy in doing business merit based selection of chief executive and board of director of banks okay so it said that there should be merit based selection rather than political selections more freedom of uh, uh, should be given to the banks and its executive board uh, to take decisions uh, you know autonomy in doing business rather than you know some politician calling the bank chairman or the bank manager to do something okay so there should be more autonomy then mergers of banks were also suggested that public sector banks to be merged rationally okay unnecessarily there were so many banks and they have to be merged then bank licenses to private banks should be given so 10 banks were given license in 1990s this we have already seen uh, you know in the previous videos uh, which were and they are known as new uh, okay new uh, private banks 
so the banks which were given licenses in 1990s they are known as new private banks this we have already seen okay so there were 10 banks in that and sbi shareholding of government should be reduced okay see uh, this i spoke about in the previous video also so it was basically the recommendation of the narsimhan committee that government should reduce the shareholding of sbi we should still have the majority shareholding but you know we should reduce it not 100% it is okay to you know sell you know maybe 30 40% of share to the common public or we, we can privatize it okay or we can give it to private sector so now government of india currently holds 57.5% of sbi and uh, uh, you know rest is uh, held by the uh, private persons uh, and regulatory framework for nbfc was also suggested so non banking financial companies so they were not having any specific regulation but it suggested that there should be some regulatory framework for them also because they are also an important part of the financial sector okay so friends there were a lot more recommendations but i have just explained to you what all are important from upsc point of view okay and only this much we need to understand we don't need to go in much de uh, detail so i hope you have understood this if you have any doubt please ask me in the comment section we'll continue this in the next video thank you